Hey there, and welcome to my first Avatar The Last Airbender video. So, as you may be aware, Avatar The Last Airbender was an animated TV show telling the story of Aang, the last airbender in a world divided by conflict, where four elemental nations exist, each being able to wield one of the four core elements, fire, water, earth, and air. And in this world, Aang is the Avatar, a special bender who's capable of wielding all the elements simultaneously, as well as being able to ascend to a borderline god state, where his powers multiply dramatically. And over the course of the story, Aang, alongside his ensemble of friends and allies he collects on his journey, travels around the world on his flying bison, looking to train hard to master the elements and end the hundred year tyranny of the Fire Nation. Sounds like a pretty epic premise, right? Well, it was! Running from 2005 to 2008, the show broke down barriers of what defined a kids show and drew in fans of all ages, exploding in popularity and spawning a sequel series and continuations via graphic novels and garnering a massive and rabid fan base who are still ravenous for new content 14 years after the series first concluded. That in itself, to me at least, is a very impressive thing. And so, when it was announced that Netflix was going to be having a crack at a live-action adaptation alongside the original creators, at first it was really exciting. I think a lot of people's initial reaction was to just get hyped. Because there's this glorious franchise that you've loved for so long, getting a fresh retelling. You get to see everything you loved about the animated version. The world, the characters, the bending, air temples and earth cities, the fire nation, sky bison, water tribes, Kyoshi warriors. All that is going to be brought to life. Isn't that just so exciting? Maybe some cool new ideas are going to be added that we didn't see in the original. Maybe some new character interactions, different scenes, things that will play out slightly differently that still honour the original source material. Nothing major, just slight alterations to help bring the world to life in a more realistic way. And honestly, that is how I felt about it for quite a while. Just a tentative sense of excitement. And then I kind of went and just forgot that it was even going to be made at all, and it faded from my perception. And that status quo persisted until recently, when I was peacefully scrolling along on social media, when out of nowhere, I stumbled across a huge debate as to whether the adaptation is going to be good or not. Whether it's going to spoil the world that's been created, and whether it really needed to be made at all. And then that got me thinking, got me doubting. Have I been wrong to be excited about this? Am I being one of those fools that just accepts whatever major studios churn out? Is my childhood about to get shat on by corporates whilst I beg for more like I'm Oliver Twist at Mr. Bumble's workhouse? So today, I want to sort of talk about the reasons why this adaptation seems like a good idea and why it might be a bit of a mistake and come to some sort of consensus in my mind as to whether I think it's a good idea or not. So with all that being said, let's try to get the negativity out of the way early and start with the reasons why it might be a mistake. And we'll start with the tried and tested classic reason they will ruin and butcher the original source material. And this really is probably the biggest reason I've seen as to why people might be a little bit worried, especially since we've now seen the departure of the original creators over creative differences. And I mean, that doesn't sound that good to me, does it? Because to me, that sounds like one of two things. Either A, the original creators were being stubborn and hard-headed about even the slightest change to the story or the world design, which prompted them to leave. Or B, the new creators were planning on significantly altering the original story, changing events and timelines, romantic interests and character arcs, basically creating a new story in the world of Avatar and slapping the title over the top of it, calling it a day. And at that stage, what is even the point? Just create your own new original story in this world instead of changing things so significantly. Just because it's your own adaptation doesn't mean you need to diverge in so many different directions to make it different from the original. But of course, there is no real evidence either way as to why they left. It could be one of those major potential reasons or any other number of creative differences that may have prompted the exit. We just don't know, but it still creates that worry. And it also opens up this question. What is a good change and what is a bad change? And more importantly, what is the point of changing things? Usually in these sort of discussions about an adaptation, we're dealing with a book or comic book to screen adaptation. And since usually more people are going to be watching the show blind and have never read the original source material, unless we're talking about Harry Potter, which is a book series that has no comparative equal, 
things will need to be cut. Things will need to be condensed and changed in order for things to be streamlined so you don't lose that casual audience. Not everything that's written on page is gonna make good TV or film. An example is the Council of Elrond from The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. On page, that scene is long and clunky. It's fine to read, but watching it would be a chore. And so Peter Jackson condensed things. He made it bearable. And often adaptations do this kind of stuff. They'll give lines to different characters, or sometimes combine characters completely for ease of understanding. And that's usually fine. You can get away with these changes, especially when it's in pursuit of making things clearer for the audience and helping them understand. We saw the same in Game of Thrones. Things were cut, characters were combined and altered, just to make things a bit more simple for the average viewer. Instead of having hundreds of characters, many of whom only speak once and then linger in the background forever. That would be too much for the audience to take in. And so the story and the characters get streamlined by the writing. And that's fine for a book to screen adaptation, but the problem here is it's a screen to screen adaptation. And in my experience, people get a lot more attached to things when they originate as a film or TV and tend to get very, very angry when things about these original films or TV shows are changed or altered. I mean, look at the constant complaints about the various different live action adaptations of the animated Disney classics, like Aladdin or Mulan or Jungle Book. People don't tend to get behind them as readily as if they were seeing a new book franchise get made into a TV show or film, because in their view, they've already seen the film. They've already watched that show. And thus, by having a new version that changes things, people often feel like the original is being criticized or invalidated, that this new version is meant to be the final copy, so to speak. And so the things they liked about it, if they're no longer there, are invalidated too. And so in a way, I feel like a lot of people end up taking any sort of change, large or otherwise, as some sort of personal affront, some sort of attack. And this is amplified by the fact that the new version often needs to be able to justify why it exists in the first place. And so different story points are often a necessity. They don't want to be a one-to-one -one adaptation. And thus the toxic cycle gets amplified. So in essence, you basically risk destroying the goodwill that fans have with the franchise by bastardizing a lot of the content and making different story decisions in your pursuit of standing out from the crowd, standing out from that original content. And so honestly, I do understand the thought that there's no point in making this. I sometimes feel that way about other such remakes, but I do feel like this is far more of a special case with this franchise. And I'm not looking to virtue signal or anything like that, but in recent times, we've seen an uptick in trends for Western media to start to emphasize diversity and multiculturalism. We've seen this mostly in casting and have started to see different stories being told with more inclusive settings and characters. But primarily, we still see them in a Western setting. In classic European historical films or in period pieces, we're seeing more black actors. And we're even seeing this in fantasy shows too. Things like House of the Dragon. But the thing is, those kind of shows, those kind of films, they still draw heavily from European cultural perspectives. There's a limited scope in including the actual cultural heritage of many other ethnic groups. And I think that's why Avatar is so important as a franchise, because it basically tells Europe to piss off and draws heavily on various different Asian and American cultures to tell its story, infusing each of the four nations with different characteristics of Arctic peoples, of Imperial Japan, China, Korea, India, Tibet, Nepal, and probably heaps of others, but those are the ones that spring to mind more for me. So this gives a huge opportunity to spotlight this sort of world in the same way that Game of Thrones spotlighted Westeros, which was pretty much an amalgam of feudal England and France and the Holy Roman Empire, with dashes of Vikings and Celtic people thrown into the mix. It seems only right that other cultures are afforded that same Hollywood spotlight, right? Plus, it seems the creative team is largely diverse as well from what I've seen. So instead of a bunch of white guys creating an approximation of an Asian-based culture, we actually get people who have actual ties to that heritage, building it from the ground up to shape something new and exciting. And I think that's just such an exciting and unique opportunity that it would be a shame to let it just go to waste because it's a repeat. So that being said, whilst I do understand some of the negativity, I honestly think this is a very good franchise to launch a live action adaptation for. It can fill a niche in Western media that's not really being targeted at all. And on top of that, it has a ready-made fan base. 
Yes, of course, it's not going to feel like the original all the time, but I think that's okay. As long as the writing's good, and the design is good, and it doesn't look cheaply made, it's going to be a-okay. And with that being said, though, these are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think about the upcoming live-action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender? Are you excited for it? Do you think it's going to be good? Or are you a little bit more apprehensive about it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.